Okay, so our notes are starting with um, scientific notation. So some of you may have seen scientific notation before. Um, there are a couple of rules that I'm really particular about how I word them. So if you word it the same way, it should keep you um, on the right track. So the first rule is to is that in order for something to be in proper scientific notation, the number must be written with just one number or one digit to the front of the decimal. So it'll follow this format where it's only one digit before the decimal. And that digit cannot be a zero. The digit has to be a whole integer between one and nine. It's never going to be a double digit number. Um, it can only be one digit before the decimal. And then the second part of this is that it's going to be multiplied. I'm going to say multiply. Multiply by a power of 10, indicating the number of decimal places that the decimal needs to move. So your exponent is going to correspond to how many places the decimal needs to move. So exponent represents this. And then I have two little sections down here. One says if the number is greater than one, the exponent will be positive. So this is usually corresponding to what we would call a large number. So a positive exponent means big number. And then a huge misconception is that if you have a negative exponent, that means your number is negative, but that's not how it works. If the number is less than one, meaning it's like a fraction, the exponent will be negative. So negative corresponds to small number. If the entire number is going to be negative, you would still have a negative sign in front of it, um, just like how you're used to seeing them. But a negative exponent is only telling you which direction to move the decimal. And then the way that we'll practice with these is that if your number, so if this is number two as our example, um, if your number does not have a decimal showing in it, if it's a normal number, a normal notation, and you can't see a decimal, do you guys know where it's implied that the decimal is? after the number. So the decimal in this number would be at the end. And since that's already following the format of only having one digit before the decimal, I would put 2.0. I just put the zero at the end because it looks kind of awkward to have two and then a period at the end or the decimal point. And then to be in scientific notation, you have to include the times 10 to the power of something. So we need to multiply it by 10 to a certain exponent. However, this value that we're writing needs to match the value of the original number. So if I do 2 times 10, that's going to change the value of the number. So I need this 10 to the power of something to equal 1 so that it's, it ends up being 2 times 1. Do you know what exponent you could put on 10 to make it equal 1? Do you remember your laws of exponents? So off to the side, if you didn't remember this, um, give yourself a note that anything to the power of zero is equal to one. So if I do 10 to the power of zero, if the exponent is zero, that means that this piece of it is equivalent to one, and then my, answer, my number is just two times one, which equals two. For the most part, we really don't use that. Um, that's just for the sake of learning um, scientific notation. I'm not trying to make numbers more complicated than they need to be. So in this class, um, as a whole, outside of just the facts of learning scientific notation, we really just use scientific notation to make things easier for us to write so that if you look down here at the bottom and you see all of these zeros, the likelihood of you making a mistake in writing that, writing the wrong number of zeros, me misreading it, something like that, um, is pretty high versus if you write this number in scientific notation, it actually makes it a whole lot easier, which is the whole point of this. All right, so our second example is if I have the number 20, 
If there is no decimal showing in that number, where is it implied? At the end, so same as before. So it's going to be at the end. But now, if I want to be in proper scientific notation and only have one digit before the decimal, I need to move that decimal. So I'm going to do the like number line sort of representation like what we would do in third grade math. So if I move that decimal, how many times did I need to move it so that it's only behind one digit? Once. So my number becomes 2.0. If you move the decimal, show me where you moved it to. So it's going to look like that. And I only moved the decimal one time. So it's going to be 2.0 times 10 to the power of 1 because I moved it once. I know that the 1 is going to be positive because this number that I started with, 20, the value I'm trying to make it equal, is greater than 1. It's a big number relative to 1. And then finally, this example says 200 million. If there is no decimal already in the number, it's implied that the decimal is at the end. I'm going to change my color. So if the decimal is here, I need to move that decimal as many places as I need to until it's only behind one non-zero digit. So my decimal is going to end up being behind the two, so I just need to count how many places I'm moving it to get there. So it's one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight times. So I needed to move the decimal eight times. After I've moved it, my number becomes 2.0. You don't need to keep all these other zeros in it. Um, if it's zeros at the end, you can drop them because they're not significant. Um, if you move the decimal like in this one and there's all of these non-zero digits, you do need to keep those. So we'll talk about that one in a minute. So 2.0 times 10, that's what's telling me I'm moving my decimal a certain number of places, and the number of times that I moved that decimal was how many? Eight, perfect. And I know it's going to be a positive eight because this is a big number. The other mistake that I see a lot of times is students just putting that exponent directly on the 2.0. So you can't just do 2.0 to the power of 8. That's not the same thing. It's the times 10 to the power of something that tells you how many times you're moving the decimal. And then if we go to the other side of this, keep in mind that these are both still positive numbers, but because these numbers are less than 1, the exponent is going to be negative. So not the number, but the exponent will. Um, so the first part, 0 0.2, I need a single non-zero digit to be in front of the decimal, so I want my decimal to be on the other side of the 2. So when I write this, it would become 2.0 times 10 to show that I moved my decimal, and how many times did I move it? I moved it one time, and it's going to be negative because of the direction that we moved it, because we're making a number that's smaller than 1. So it's a negative 1. Notice that at no point during any of this did I mention, like, we're moving it to the left or we're moving it to the right, because it depends on if you're going into scientific notation or out of scientific notation, and then students get really confused with that. So I purposely talk about moving the decimal to make the number smaller or moving the decimal to make the number bigger. If you remember it that way, um, it's a lot harder to get confused if you just remember that negative means small number, positive means big number. And then the last example we'll do together is the 0 0.00002. I need to move my decimal until it is after the only non-zero digit. So I'm going to move it one, two, three, four, five times, and then my decimal becomes there. So the way that I would write this is now that my decimal is moved, I do 2.0. Any zeros in front, that's not how we write numbers. So if you move your decimal, you're not going to write like, I saw several students do 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If you do that, that's not how we write numbers. So you're taking off all of those zeros. They're not changing the value. They're not adding anything of importance to this. So 2.0 times 10 to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times that I moved the decimal, but it's going to be a negative exponent since this number is small. So 10 to the negative fifth. Did I count that right? 1, 2, 3, 4. Cool. 
So notice there are four zeros that does not match with the exponent and it doesn't need to. The exponent tells you how many times you're moving the decimal, not how many zeros are present in the number. Any questions on any of this so far? All right, I'm gonna pause for us to get some practice um, in this next little section and then I'll restart the video when we go over the answers. Okay, so going over the answers for these, if your number is not in scientific notation, we're gonna put it in scientific notation. So my decimal is here. My recommendation is to always start with your pen or pencil on the actual decimal. That way you can count. And then you're going to move it until there's only one non-zero digit in front of the decimal. So for this one, I'm gonna move it one, two times. And once I move it here, I have my non-zero digit of two in front of the decimal. Um, as I was walking around, the mistake that I saw a lot of students do is they turned it into 2.0. But if you have another digit that's not zero, keep that as well. So it's going to be 2.3. So you're just copying this with the decimal in the new location. It's always going to be times 10 if it's in scientific notation. That 10 is going to tell you how many times you're moving your decimal. And then the exponent on this is I moved this two times. So it's going to be an exponent of 2, but because this number is less than 1, it's not a negative number, but it's a small number, my exponent is going to be negative. So 2.3 times 10 to the negative 2. On the next one, I have 6.8 times 10 to the negative 9th. That 9 tells me what? What information can I get from the digit of the exponent? to move the decimal, what, not nine times, right? Okay, so the nine tells you move it nine times, and the negative tells you what? That it's a small number. So if you put your pencil on the decimal, and you're like, okay, I just always move it to the right just to see what happens. If you start moving this to the right, and you get all these, and you fill them in with zeros, you're gonna realize you're making a really, really large number. So that should be an indicator that you're going the wrong direction. So for this one, you're going to take your pencil on the decimal, move it nine times to make a small number. So it's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then show me where your decimal is. So once you move it, actually put the decimal there. Sorry, I was cut off. So I put the decimal here. And then in each of those little loops, that's where you put your zeros. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight zeros because the ninth spot where you moved your decimal is already taken up by that six. Um, if this is your number, what would go before the decimal? Zero. So I'm pretty particular about um, placeholder zeros. We'll have a lot of different names for them. If you have a number that starts with a decimal because it's a really small number, it's less than one, it's a fraction. Um, Make sure you put your leading zero like we do here. It does not change the value of the number at all. It's just telling me, hey, look out, there's a zero here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then six, eight. Then I have 23 times 10 to the fifth. This one is going to be really similar to the 10 times 10 to the sixth that we did on the board, where it looks like in since it's in scientific notation, but it's technically not, because I have two digits that would be before my implied decimal. So in this case, since there's no decimal showing, this looks like a whole number, my decimal is implied at the end. I would need to move my decimal five times to make it bigger, so one, two, three, four, five. If I did five loops after this one, that would be five zeros, so it would end up being 23, and then one, two, three, four, five. But that's not in scientific notation, so with the number in that format, your decimal is at the end. I would move it back over one, two, three, four, five, six places, so it would be 2.3 times 10 to the sixth in scientific notation. So 23 times 10 to the fifth, um, 200, what is that? I don't even know what this number is. One, two, three, boom. Oh, 2 million, three, two million three hundred thousand, and then 2.3 times 10 to the sixth. Those are all equivalent to one another. Those values are the exact same. It's just different ways of expressing the same number. I'm going to skip this one for now and go down to this one since it's the same um, kind of format, and we already did that one on the board. It's the same thing where you're moving your decimal. So we got 10 times 10 to the seventh power, meaning here I had to move the decimal seven places, and here I had to move the decimal just 
Oops, sorry, 1. 1.0. 1. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. 1.0 times 10 to the 7th, because you'd have to move it 7 times to equal that same number of 10 million. And then the one that I skipped over is a super long number. Where is the decimal in this one? At the very end, after all of the zeros, I'm going to keep moving that decimal until there's only one non-zero digit in front of it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So your decimal goes between the one and the two. And then you're going to write any other, what we call significant figures. So if something is a non-zero digit, it's automatically significant. So it's going to be 1.2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So all of those decimal points, or all those um, extra digits get included. Your decimal is still just after the one. And because I had to move my decimal place 12 times, I'm going to do times 10 to the power of 12. It's a positive 12 because this is a really big number. So even though in this case, and this is why I don't teach the left and right thing, in this number, I moved my decimal to the left. And in this number, I also moved my decimal to the left. One is a really big number, and one is a really small number. So that's why I don't ever teach it as left and right, because it depends on if you're going into scientific notation like we were here, or if you're going out of scientific notation. So pay attention to um, positive exponent means big number. Small number is going to be a negative exponent. Um, this one is just a little tricky, because it's an awkward way to look at the number. The answer was just 1. So 1 times 10 to the power of 1, we remember that anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So it's basically just 1 times 1, which equals 1. You could also write it as 1.0 if you really wanted to. That's fine. And then 2.34 times 10 to the 16th, I would move my decimal 16 places to make it a big number. So it's going to go 1, 2, and then 14 more times. So there's going to be 14 zeros on this. So it's going to be 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So go back through. Don't know what number that is, but we can separate our zeros. Boom, boom, boom. Cool. And then finally, the last one. First of all, is this a really big or really small number? Really small number, so what does that automatically tell you about the exponent? It's going to be a negative exponent. Um, I need to move my decimal until I have only one non-zero digit in front of the decimal. So I'm going to move it as many times as I need to until I have a decimal after this 9. So the number part that I'm going to write is going to be 9.11 times 10, because I'm moving my decimal, to the power of however many times I need to move it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and then 31. So times 10 to the power of 31 because that's how many times I moved it, but we already said it's going to be a negative exponent since it's a really small number. So it's times 10 to the negative 31st power. Are there any questions over any of these or anything you want me to explain again? Perfect.